So, 20 journalists, reportedly including two Britons, face trial in Egypt on a whole raft of charges, treason, publishing falsehoods, paying for stories, and even terrorism connected with alleged links to the outlawed Muslim Brotherhood. Egypt's public prosecutor said that four correspondents with the Al Jazeera television network had published lies about the country that had harmed its national interest. Three years after the revolution witnessed by the world in Tahrir Square, why has Egypt's new military leader turned on the press? Our foreign affairs correspondent, Jonathan Miller, has this. Exactly three years after the revolution which ousted the dictator, Egypt's new era of democracy and freedom is fast fizzling out. The country at the vanguard of the Arab world's awakening now heading back to the future. Field Marshal Abdul Fattah al-Sisi leading the counter-revolutionary crackdown on dissent. And at the sharp end, five Al Jazeera journalists languishing in jail and facing trial accused of belonging to a terrorist organization, namely the outlawed Muslim Brotherhood. Al Jazeera continues to call on the Egyptian government to release five of its journalists who've been held without charge. The award-winning 48-year-old former BBC correspondent Peter Grester has now been held for a month. Today, another appeal against his detention denied. He's a veteran of reporting wars and revolutions, including Egypt's. These protesters are making it very clear just how determined they are to continue to defy the government. Earlier this week, in a handwritten letter smuggled out of Cairo's Torah prison, Peter Grester wrote, I'm nervous as I write this. I've been locked in my cell 24 hours a day. And as to how he'd ended up there, he said, We've been doing exactly as any responsible professional journalist would recording and trying to make sense of the unfolding events. How do you accurately and fairly report on Egypt's ongoing political struggle without talking to everyone involved? Under what's fast becoming the al-Sisi regime, it seems that even interviewing Brotherhood members is now deemed a crime. Even though Al Jazeera journalists have sought to tell both sides of the story, the Egyptian authorities don't trust the network, which is based in and bankrolled by Qatar. And Qatar supports Egypt's now fugitive brotherhood. To suggest that our reporting of the situation in Egypt was biased, or worse, colluding with one side of the story, is outrageous. There's no justification whatsoever in continuing to lock up our team. It's not just Al Jazeera that's copying it now. The land of the pharaohs is today among the world's top ten jailers of journalists and the third deadliest for reporters after Syria and Iraq. It's a clear attack on media freedom and the freedom to challenge and report and criticize what's going on in Egypt today and that's absolutely fundamental to democracy and what we hoped we'd seen in the last three years in Egypt was a move, a revolution, taking Egypt to democracy. Instead, this seems to be more than the thin end of a wedge. This seems to be the return pretty much to something akin to the Mubarak era. Today in London, Al Jazeera held a news conference ramping up the appeal to free the imprisoned reporters. Um, we absolutely refute it. It's, it's just not true. Um, and we just, we just keep on that line. It's not true, it's not true, it's not true. It's now emerged that beyond the five held in Cairo, a further 15 Al Jazz journalists will shortly be charged with what appear to be serious terrorism-related offences. Many, it seems, will be tried in absentia, including two Britons. The Foreign Office is trying to find out who they are. The Egyptian security state is on the march, a jackboot in the face of press freedom.